The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Susan Sweeney, one of the deans at eLearning U, and I'd like to welcome you to today's program, Do-It-Yourself Video for Travel and Tourism, How to Create Engaging Videos in 2020. For anybody that is new on the call, we go for about 50 minutes of great content, and then we have about 10 minutes of Q&A. We do our Q&A one of two ways. You can type your question in the question area, and I will read those out to our expert, Lisa Lubin, today. Alternatively, if you'd like to speak directly to Lisa to get your question answered, just wait till we're in the Q&A time period, and then click on that little hand symbol on your control panel that lights up on my screen and lets me know that you want me to unmute you so that you can speak to Lisa. I'll give you a heads up, call you by your first name, and let you know that I'm going to unmute you. Uh, once I unmute you, you can talk to Lisa, get your question answered. Everybody can hear the question and everybody can hear the answer. Once your question has been answered to your satisfaction, I will then mute you again and we'll go on to the next question. Um, okay, so we'll get on with our program. Our expert today, Lisa Lubin. Lisa is an established travel food writer and photographer, video consultant, a three-time Emmy award-winning TV producer. Wow and travel industry expert. After more than a decade in broadcast television, Lisa took a sabbatical and traveled around the world for three years. She's been blogging at llworldtour.com since 2006. Lisa also owns LL Media, a media and video consulting business. She works with clients to coach them on the basics of video production, from shooting to editing to writing for video. She has spoken about video, journalism, and travel at many conferences, including the Travel Blog Exchange, the Society of American Travel Writers, the Illinois Governor's Conference on Tourism, the World Travel Market in London, the New York Travel Fest, and the Women in Travel Summit, the American Society of Journalists and Authors. Her writing and photography has also been published by American Way, Hemispheres, Wall Street Journal, Chicago Tribune, WestJet Magazine, Sheridan Road Magazine, American Express, The Malibu Times, and Luxury Las Vegas. Lisa, we are so happy to have you with us today and really looking forward to your program. Thanks so much, Susan. Hi, everybody. Hope everyone's having a lovely Thursday. Um, working from home, possibly most of you. Um, as Susan said, my name is Lisa Lubin, um, and welcome to my webinar. Let me, oh, I can't, no, I can't forward my thing. Hold on. There we go. Um, so she pretty much gave you my intro, Emmy Award winner. I used to work in television for my first half of my career, um, various uh, TV stations. I was a director and a producer. Um, my last one was ABC7 in Chicago. I'm based in Chicago. Um, and since I left that, I did go traveling, which turned into a travel writing career. So it's kind of nice because I'm in your world of travel um, and I'm also a video expert. So now I own a company called LL Media and I do video consulting and coaching. Um, I used to teach TV production also at a school in Chicago. And I'm also currently a part-time travel and food writer. Um, photographer and speaker. So we're going to talk about video today. It's hard because I don't, you know, there's many of you listening out there um, and I don't know where you're at in your video journey. So, but I'll be talking about kind of a lot of the basics and strategy of video and lots of things that anyone can incorporate no matter where you are. And I think also, you know, at this time that we're in, unfortunately, uh, it's a tough time and a lot of budgets are being slashed. Um, you know, I know a lot of my friends and colleagues in various tourism boards um, and DMOs are having a tough time. So, you know, cutting staffs and Friends of mine have lost their jobs. Um, so it's a tough time, but it's also, which also is another reason, kind of a, a example of helping you, you know, with what I do, because it's teaching individuals how to do their own video instead of hiring someone, especially now if you don't have, you have even less funds to maybe hire a video production company. So 
let's first let's get into it. So first of all, you know, one of the you know I'm very organized, and one of the things about being a producer is you're an organizer. And one of the most important things before you think about what equipment to buy or you think about pulling out your phone and shooting a video, you really want to sit down just like with any kind of business plan and think about your video strategy. You know, what are you doing this for? Why? Who's watching? So if you're on here, you probably know already these kinds of things. So video is very important today. Um, you know, in my life and career, video slash television has all, always been big, but now everyone can use it in their marketing arsenal. Whereas before it was very expensive. You only could hire experts to do it. You only could pay thousands of dollars to get a commercial on television, you know, pre-internet. So now there's, everything's easier and cheaper. There's much more um, or less barriers to entry because you have your own, you have your own channels, a YouTube channel, you have your own platforms, you know, that you don't have to pay to put on there. So everyone's using video and it's paying off because a lot of people um, are watching much more video than they would, you know, read a whole blog post, um, especially since you can put little video snippets on social media like Instagram or Facebook. Um, so this is just some of the stats of, you know, the latest stats from this past year, this year of what marketers are saying about video and you all probably already know it's important um, to start using video. So before you shoot anything, you want to figure out what you're doing. First, just like anything else, you know, in your marketing strategy, who is your audience? And then when you know who your audience is, what age, what demographics, what platform are they living on? You know, if you are trying to, to get younger, uh, more younger travelers uh, or customers, you might be looking into, you know, Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok. Um, if you're looking for uh, pitching seniors on a cruise or some older audience, you might be more Facebook, YouTube, um, and that kind of thing. So it depends on who your audience is as far as what kind of videos you're gonna do and then where those videos will live. And then figuring out, okay, what's the goal of our videos? Um, how often do we want to do them or can we do them? I always, you know, doing video can seem daunting, but I think if you start, you, you, you organize, you figure out the answers to these questions, and then you also start slow. Okay, I'm going to just do one a month and, and get your groove in that so you don't overwhelm yourself before you even begin and then just give up or not give up, but put it off. And, you know, because obviously all of us are busy and you have many other tasks. So this is always sort of for some, it's still an afterthought you know, of adding video. Oh, I'm already doing social media and I'm doing all these other things, but video keeps getting put off, even though it, it can be really powerful. So what kinds of videos? So you figure out your audience and why you're doing video in general, but then what kinds of videos, or I like to say series, like if you think of um, a channel on TV and there's different series, so you might have different series. Um, and also keeps you organized and your keeps your viewer knowing what they're watching. So you might have like one generic, what's called an explainer video or intro video that's just sort of a, a highlight reel or a quick one to two minute, who are we kind of general video, but then you'll have these more specific series that could be uh, customer stories, so or, or locals, I'll say. So people that live in your destination that love it. And it's like a little minute snippet once a week, once a month of these people just taking us around their neighborhood or what, you know, that could be one thing. Or another could be as simple as a Q&A where one of you on your team does a Q&A on Facebook once a week of like, frequently asked questions about your destination, about your hotel or, or whatever um, your company is. So thinking about these different um, types of videos. Um, there's many more of these. I actually, if you go to my website, it's llmedia.co and you sign up for my main mailing list, what you get is 25 content ideas for videos, which will help you brainstorm what 
which of those fit into your your you know business and what you're trying to do um and then it's nice to have these sort of buckets of videos and be like okay these five will work for us like testimonials or or the themed ones where you put together a video on um, all the great food in your destination or all the breweries that are opening up if you're a big brewery town or you know what I'm saying so um, just figuring out all those different content types and picking a couple to begin with you know again I say like begin with one type of you know if, and if it's your intro video and then pick like one series get that going and see how, you know, and then you, the, like anything, you get used to it, you get in a groove, you get a system down, and then you can add in another. So also still, before you shoot anything, this is all the pre-production thinking. And um, so now you're, you know, you have like a series you wanna do where every month or every week, you're gonna do a new episode or, you know, video in this series. So thinking about each one, what's the focus of each one. Oh, this particular one is going to be this new vegan restaurant that opened, or this particular one is going to be just a roundup of our top breweries or our outdoor activities, um, that kind of thing. And also, you know, just like any um, media, any journalism, print, video, audio, radio, um, podcast, um, the human element is really what moves the story. So really trying to have a local or have a person kind of tell the story through them and why they love, you know, these these breweries or, why, or the, the, this person who opened uh, some restaurant, uh, their new donut shop, but they used to be, you know, a fireman and now this is their dream, you know. So con having us connect with a real person is always, um, a goal to have so you want to figure out that and again some of your videos might be you doing a Q&A or you um, telling us giving us a roundup of what's going on in July so it also could just be you sitting there at you know in in your office doing a video on your webcam which is fine that's also you know all of this is in the video umbrella some of it will be more produced and you have to edit it together and some will be just you on camera so but everything I'm gonna you know go over here will help you make all of those types of videos better quality um, so you want to plan ahead figure out what you're doing again even if it's just you sitting there what's your what's your outline or if it's a bigger kind of story going outside and, and filming with other people you know figure it out get it organized and organize your gear which should be the next slide so um i am a big um proponent or opponent of not having people have to spend a lot of money like i said earlier there's low bearish entry now and everyone has a phone um, pretty much a smartphone that has a pretty high quality HD camera on it. Um, but you can also step, you know, go up from that and use a DSLR camera that shoots video or a mirrorless camera that shoots video. The, the nice thing about using those or even a camcorder, which is made to shoot video. So it is easier actually than using a DSLR. Um, because you can do zooms really easily and all of that but the advantage to using like a separate camera from your smartphone is just better quality because you can change lenses and you can change depth of field although that being said you can actually do that with some camera apps on your phone as well so it can go either way. What's actually sometimes more important, because you're not trying to film like a an Oscar-worthy video, it's HD, it, you know, but if you use a tripod and good audio, that is sometimes more important. Because you could shoot with a really high quality camera but not use a tripod and it's all shaky, just as you can with your phone and it's all shaky, or you put your phone on a tripod or what I have here is a gimbal, which is a gimbal stabilizer, where you put your phone or your camera in that. It's almost, um, you know, it, it it holds it so it has less shake and it stabilizes it. Um, 
So again, you, you might have some of these things already that you can use. So uh, for sound, it is better quality. If you're, if you're just doing something in your office with your laptop like I am now, and I'm not using a microphone, I'm using my, micro, my built-in microphone on my laptop. Um, but normally, if you're filming, you can get a USB microphone, so at least it's a little better quality and it cuts off any room noise. Um, for example, my air conditioner is running right now, and I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can hear it, and it might, you know, if I was recording something, I would have turned it off completely. I didn't for this because then I'd be sweating. It's hot today here. Um, so uh, it's always best, better to have a microphone. And then if you're, you're filming with your phone or, or a camera, you can get a clip-on lavalier microphone or a shotgun microphone, because again, those are always gonna be better quality than the built-in microphone. And you can really hear the difference. And mostly when I say quality, it's mostly if you just use the built-in microphone and your camera is, you know, five to 10 feet away from you, it's also gonna be picking up traffic noise and air conditioner noise and any other noise. But if you have a clip-on microphone on you, like a wireless clip-on, or even a shotgun microphone, those are centered toward just picking up the sound you want. So the person speaking, whether it's you or someone you're interviewing. Uh, extra batteries and memory cards, if you're using a separate camera, you know, a phone charger, if you're using your phone. Um, I put, you know, lens cloth, a lot of people forget to clean their lens even on their phone. So just two seconds and it's not some, you know, smudged camera. Um, so if you're using a smartphone, a selfie stick or a stabilizer, um, and like I said, an external mic. I also have a page on my website. I should have put the link here for recommended gear. Um, and you can see that up in the menu. My site's pretty simple. Um, where I link to a lot of these things that I recommend. Okay, so you're ready to shoot. Um, and just some basics of shooting, whether it's yourself or an interview or anything. For the most part, you should shoot horizontally, except for in Instagram. So this is tough because um, most of you, what you're watching this on, I would assume are computers or even your phones or tablets, but you, you would have it horizontally because my slideshow is horizontal and our screens are still horizontal, our TV screens are still horizontal. So that's how it always was. Things are changing a little with some social media platforms. So if you're only like filming on Instagram, then you could shoot vertical, but I still, um, say shoot horizontally so then you can cross platform and have it on YouTube and you know you can have it on YouTube vertical but then think about it it's going to have those big black bars and it's just going to be this tall skinny video instead of a video that goes horizontally across the whole entire screen fills the screen. Um, you always want to use a tripod as much as possible or a, a, a selfie stick or a stabilizer and that, that right there steps up your quality to much more professional looking than just like a handheld shaky, especially phones because they're so light, they shake a lot. Um, and do not use your digital zoom. If you're using your phone, don't pinch your fingers in and out on the screen to zoom because that just degrades the quality. Just walk closer to what it is you want because um, the digital zoom isn't like a real quality type zoom. So if you are going to be on camera uh, representing your brand or destination, um, you know, and you're gonna be a personality, you know, one of the nice things about doing that is with blogging and all of this kind of thing is, and, and any company really, putting a manager, an executive, or a person that works there on camera personalizes the brand, as you know, um, and might endear us more to the brand. So that is, you know, something that's going on now in the world where now we're, we're getting to know the people behind the brand much more than we used to. Um, so no matter what, always introduce yourself and your brand at the top of your video because you don't know, you know, if this is your 10th video, doesn't mean it's not the first time I'm watching it. So always introduce yourself. It's just good marketing and your brand, you know, tell us who you are. Um, be natural, be yourself. If it's good news you're sharing, smile, be happy, be you know um, friendly. So we, um, again, we, we like you and we wanna tune in for the next one. 
just like with any interview or anything, you want to keep your camera at eye level. And I also talk um, about this when I talk to people about doing like webinars like this, even though I'm not on camera or um, any kind of you know Zoom call or, or interview. You want to really be mindful of where your camera is. So even if you're just using your laptop, there's still a camera and you want that to be eye, at eye level. You may have heard this before. So you want to put like books under your laptop or something like mine is actually on a laptop stand. So the camera, so I'm not looking down at it because normally when your laptop's down on your desk, the camera's like below you. So it's, it, it's look, you're looking down on it and it's looking up at you and up at your ceiling. It's usually not a very good look. And it's so easy to just put a few books or a stand and have it at the right height. It just looks so much more pleasing. Um, there's even a Twitter account now. Some of you might've seen it. I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's like called we rate Skype, Skype rooms or something like that. And it's great. I love it because I'm in video, but they just take screenshots of screenshots of people's Zoom calls uh, from all over the world, really, but mostly the US. Um, you know, when people are being interviewed on the Today Show or especially now because everyone's at home. So it's not like they're on a professional camera and they rate them and say, oh, we liked, you know, that your camera's at eye level or that there's, oh, there's too much junk behind you. So it's, you know, when you're doing a webcam video or interview, you want the camera to be at a level, you want to be mindful of your background. Um, you want to look at the camera actually as much as possible instead of looking at yourself on the screen. That's a, something a lot of people do, um, especially if you're being recorded on the other end. Um, and you, because you want to, and, and if you're doing a video to talk to your your followers, you want to look at them. So you really want to be mindful of looking at the camera. It's just a little dot and it might feel strange, but it looks so much better because then it, you're really looking at the person you're talking to. Um, yeah, and if you're doing something like that, try not to read a script, uh, try to be natural, maybe have an outline, but you can still ad lib. The nice thing about video is it's more informal for the most part, unless you're doing something more serious or really a video that's really scripted. In other cases, you want to just be yourself, you know, be succinct, get your point out, but not, you know, try not to memorize. Okay, and if you're doing interviews, um, and a lot of this, again, can be the same tips can be used also for shooting yourself. Um, so if you're, but you're shooting an interview like this gentleman, you want also, you want a, a nice background. You don't want just a white wall and you don't want too much clutter. This is actually a kind of a busy room, but it's still nice because he's, the background is out of focus, which most smartphones can do. Definitely, you know, DSLRs can do because this is, a, is, is what's called a short depth of field. So he's in focus, but the background is out, which is really nice for an interview. His eyes are at the level of the camera. He's looking off camera because someone is interviewing him. So definitely, if you're doing that and you're interviewing someone, they can be looking at you. You're like standing next to the camera. That's normal and natural. If he was like, if he worked for your DMO or your brand and he was talking about it, then he would be looking into the camera at us. But he's an, an interview subject. You want to shoot mostly close up. People tend to who are new to video shoot much wider as far as uh, interviews than they have to. Um, shoot at eye level, make sure you focus on their eyes because that's where we'll be looking. If you are shooting outside, you know, I, again, I'm, I don't want to overwhelm with too much lighting or tips, but just try to be mindful. Don't shoot at midday because that's when the sun is at the top, you know, straight up overhead and it's the least flattering because think about it it's just like a light shining straight down over your nose kind of casting shadows on your face so lower in the sky is nicer and typically actually slightly cloudy day or being in the shade is a more even lighting and a nicer look um here's just an example of just just wanted to show you these so this is a, a you know a, a photograph of the viewfinder of a camera and then the actual setup in real life you know in front of, or in front of the camera so you can see look at on the left of the guy the actual 
final shot, it's, you know, it's nice. It's the background's out of focus. You can't really tell of much. It's just a little color, some cabinets. And then look in real life at this kind of boring, cluttery, nothing office. And I always tell people, you know, that's, you know, and but see where they put him, they brought him out. So they used the depth of the room. So they didn't put him up against a wall. They brought him way over here toward the camera. So all that stuff in the background kind of fell out of focus. And because the shot is tight, another, you know, another tip keeping it tight, you don't see any of this. You certainly don't even know where he is at all. You know, you don't know, you don't see that ceiling, you don't see, and the same thing on the shot on the right, there's some great bookshelves, so that's always nice, but you can bear, you know, you don't see that he's not sitting when you went to sh go to shoot this, you don't say, okay, you sit on the couch. No, you bring him way in front of all of that because then all that depth helps make the background out of focus. Um, if he's right on the couch, right behind, and the books are right behind them, him, they would be in focus, and then that would be too busy because he's in focus, books are in focus, it would just be too distracting. So bringing him way over here with that farther behind him makes it, allows it to be out of focus. I um, mean, you can see the person interviewing him. This woman is also right here next to the lens. So he's looking off at her, but not too far off. You know, she wants to be close to the lens. So you see most of his face. So it's not a profile shot. Here's uh, what not to do. So like I said, don't put them straight up against a wall. Uh, the one on the left has shadows and it's boring and they're also, it's too wide and the person doing the interviewing is right next to him. So they're kind of ignoring the viewer. They're just looking at each other. Their faces are profiles to us. So it's almost like we're excluded. Um, and the man on the right is up against a wall. It's centered and that should, an interview shot, so it shouldn't be centered. And both of these have, you know, not fabulous lighting. Here's an example of how to shoot an interview. Uh, these are screenshots of interviews I did during my travels. Um, so you can see they're both looking off at me. I was standing next to the lens. Um, they are all natural lighting. So I just did it outside, no, no lights, but you can see they're far from their background. So it's softer um, and they're tight shots. You know, look at the woman on the left. It's almost just her neck up, but it's, so the eyes are, should be in the top third of the frame. Don't worry about cutting off people's heads. It's all about where their eyes are. So as far as sound, you, especially if you're doing an interview, you want to use a clip-on microphone or a shotgun microphone to pick up their sound, much better quality than, than a built-in microphone. If you have the ability, you also want to check the sound through your through headphones that you're wearing, um, so you can really make sure there's no problem with the microphone itself or the battery of the microphone, because you can maybe see levels on a camera, but the levels aren't going to tell you if there's some kind of crackle or some kind of hiss. Um, and the same on the same token, you want to look at the levels if you can, if the device you're using has levels, so you can see that it's you know that the quality is good, that it's not over modulated and too loud. Um, if you don't have levels, you can just do a quick um, dry run or practice record and just listen to it. But it's, it is better if you, you have levels to look at. And like I said before, be mindful of um, ambient noise that the microphone can pick up. Don't do your interview right next to the highway or with your AC on or even music. So if you're at a, a restaurant and you're filming, um, when I you know worked, at local uh, television, we would ask them to, if they could just turn off their music for the 10 minutes that we were gonna do the interview because not only do you not want it in the background, you might be putting music into your final edited piece. So now you'll have uh, competing music on their different music, but also with the music and you're making edits, then the edits will be even more noticeable because the song is gonna be skipping when you edit it out. So for lighting, whether you're shooting yourself or doing an interview, you know, you, you can certainly keep it natural. Um, you might use a little light that you bring. And if you're at home too, you know, people are using ring lights. Many of you probably have heard of that. It's literally shaped in a ring. Um, you can also use a regular video light. Ring lights people like a lot because it, it 
um, because of its shape, it kind of throws a very bright but even light on your whole face. You know, you've seen these influencers uh, doing makeup tutorials. They're using, or fashion bloggers are using them. They're they're good for that, and it's it's personal preference. I don't love that it it actually reflects the ring in the in your pupil or your iris. You can see this round light in people's eyes. It's a, so if you have a close up of someone, I find that to be strange, sort of alien looking. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Like whenever I've done some on camera, I have like a regular LED light with a dimmer too so you can adjust a little so it's not too harsh or you can just sit like right now i'm actually sitting in my kitchen with a window um, i'm facing a window which means it's casting light on my face so if you can have a face a window not a window behind you because that causes backlight um have a, a lamp with a lamp shade meaning the shade um is like a natural diffuser so you can certainly shoot especially if you're filming yourself you know with a window but you're, it's a balance because you, if you have a window and there's a nice background behind you, great. But sometimes you can't have both. So then you have, might have to either use a light and pick a spot with a good background, but there's no light, so you need to get a light. Or uh, you have a, uh, or the other way around. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's some, you know, basics of lighting. Um, if you do buy a light, it's it's nice to get one with a dimmer um and you want to put the light kind of up and to the side of you kind of 45 degrees up kind of act as if it's like a natural like the sun um you certainly you know it you obviously you can move it around and you'll see how it affects shadows on your face the front facing light on you is in most cases the best. If you put it on the side, you'll see it's kind of only lighting half your face and the other side is dark. And it's, that's like a, it looks like a Beatles cover. It's, um, you know, it adds uh, an effect. In most cases, you just want it to look natural and clean. So if you've shot interviews and you've shot maybe yourself, but sometimes if you're shooting a, a little more of a packaged video uh, showcasing, say, outdoor activities somewhere, you need to shoot what's called B-roll, and that's all the other footage showing the thing you're talking about, showing, um, let's say, a brewery, showing them making the beer, showing the vats, showing the bottles, showing the workers. Um, so that's what this is, and it, it makes the video more interesting. Um, ultimately, you know, it shows what's being said. And it's these shots and the sound, the, the cool natural sound from the brewery or the restaurant or the kayaking, the sounds of the water, that brings us in, that tells the story and is really nice when you have really good, what's called natural sound, sound that's happening out there. So sound is very important and just as important as video and a lot of people kind of forget about it. So when you're shooting B-roll shots, you want to, again, use, um, don't use unnecessary camera movement, meaning don't be zooming and tilting and panning all over. You want there to be action in the actual, in the life, like if people are kayaking, they're moving. So your camera doesn't need to be moving. That's just unnatural because you can have movement in your shots and also movement when you edit it. So the, the, the pace, um, is quicker, meaning each shot is shorter, and that'll move it along rather than the camera panning and moving, that, which can just become nauseating. Um, you just want some beautiful looking shots and, you know, someone's walking through the scene or doing something in your shot. And for each, each sort of scene you're filming, if you want to call it that, you want to get a wide shot, a medium tight, and close-up shots because that'll help you when you go to edit. And you have three different types of shots showing the same thing, which also makes it more interesting. Here's um, an example of what I'm talking about. So this is a, at a restaurant. It's a, a chef and a pastry chef in a kitchen. And you can see he's. this is one action, one scene. He's doing, except for the last number six, that's his interview, but all one through five, he's doing this 
making this cookies or icing or whatever he's doing here. Um, and you can see all the different angles you can get of this one thing. So you can just see that's how you edit it together. So you can just go from, you know, really you'd probably go from wide to tight to medium. So you'd have like, you'd start with say number four and you cut to number one and you cut to number three, then to number two. And so you've got this nice flow as if you had four cameras on the scene when you only had one but you just shot from different angles. So when you edit it together, it has a nice creative flow. And again, you know, not everyone's gonna be doing B-roll. Um, it's definitely something good to know. And all of this is also good to know if you do end up hiring out and hiring a producer like myself or production company to film certain videos for you, then you, but you still know what needs to get done and you, you have an understanding of what they're gonna do. Of course, you know, that always helps. Um, B-roll uh, rules for each shot, just, you know, just kind of hammering home, staying still. So for each of these shots, like if you're about to shoot his hand, number one here, close up, uh, at, also at, at sort of counter level, which is kind of nice. You wanna get that shot ready, frame it, focus it, Plant your feet if you're hand holding or plant the tripod and then hit record and record for 10 seconds. So you have 10 usable seconds. You might, when you edit, you might only use two of those seconds, two to three. You're not gonna use all 10, that would be too much, but you have 10 to choose from because maybe the first two, the camera shook because you were pressing the record button. And the same thing with the last two seconds. Maybe in the middle, something else happened, someone bumped the, you know, so you just want to be patient and get 10 seconds so you know that in that 10 seconds there'll be something a, a two second chunk that's your favorite chunk to use and then once you shoot that you should move meaning you stop recording but then move where you are change your angle change your location so you get different you're not always in the same position here you're number four you're over your shoulder number three you came back around from the side so it also kind of makes it more creative and changes up, just like here. To add creativity, don't be afraid to get high, get low, get on the ground like this guy. These are cool shots where you see like feet walking down the sidewalk, but at feet level. Because in real life, we're never really, we don't usually crouch down to see what life looks like at this level, a worm's eye view or a bird's eye view. So when, when you can with your camera, get these cool angles, because it again also makes your your video more compelling. This would be like if you're at a low angle uh, filming this this uh, kangaroo, white kangaroo. <laughs> um, yeah. So you've shot shot your video. now um, or you can upgrade so you might have iMovie or something like that which is free or you can upgrade Final Cut Pro there's also Adobe Premiere um, some of these aren't that expensive um, Final Cut the one I'm using I think it was $250 um, you know some of them now uh, have like monthly fees I think Adobe Premiere, but you can sometimes get an older version where you're not having to pay the monthly fee. So there's lots of, you know, different ways. And, oh, I will say something I actually need to add into this. Um, there's also now all these online editing tools. So I actually also have a, a blog. Actually, I think it's my most recent blog post on LLmedia.co is sort of a review of, I think, five or six online ed, uh, editing tools. So you've seen them now, right? All these Buzzfeed videos, style videos, where it's just video and music and words, right? So that's another thing to think about if you're not even shooting your own video, but you wanna start doing these sort of listicle type videos, you can do them really easily on these sites. And they, they all actually have a free either trial or a free component where you use them for free, but the their watermark is on it. But also to pay like the upgrade, it's not that expensive. Some of them are like 15 bucks a month or something like that. And it could be like 
five reasons to, you know, uh, five things to do in winter in X location or whatever. And then you can use your own footage or stock footage. Foot they, they all, almost all of these sites come with stock footage. So if you're just looking for generic type footage, you can find it on there. Or if you have some of your own older B-roll, you can upload it and then you can choose the music right on there, um, royalty free music, and you can choose the graphics and type them on there. And it's quite, most of these are quite easy. And if you go to that post I wrote, I kind of review each one and say, you know, what's good and bad about each one. Those are great. Those are also an, um, a good, way to get into video because they're very easy and they're great for social media because they're usually like a minute long and it's usually like a listicle type thing so yeah i, should, I need to add that to the slide that's actually a good a good tip so um and, and you know the the two that come to mind there's one called lumen 5 and animoto is another one there's all the in video there's these companies now you just you can just edit right on their website so if you're editing yourself um, and even if you're doing one of those tech videos, you want to have some kind of outline, some kind of script before you start editing. So you really have it all together, again, organized, you know what you want first, what you want second. You know, if you did interview someone, you've already listened to it all. You've already chosen the two or three sound bites out of the whole interview that you're going to use, because usually we're trying to keep our videos shorter. Um, so you want to have that all kind of written down on paper. So it's all in front of you and you you already know the order it's going to go in it helps you a lot so you're not just staring at the screen and moving stuff around and just kind of disorganized um when i say lay your audio down first i just mean your script is going to be your audio it's going to say you know this soundbite or this voiceover if you're doing voiceover uh music and it's sort of in chronological order. So of course, when you edit, you have to think about the audio first, even though video might be attached to it. Obviously, if there's an interview and, and you're using a certain soundbite, well, the person's face is there too. And you can cover that up later with the B-roll. So you just wanna think audio first, lay it all down first. And then on top of that, put, put the different video shots you wanna use. You wanna let your story breathe not like I'm doing now, I need to take a drink. Um, <clears throat> so that it's not wall to wall voiceover or wall to wall sound bites. You want some music up full in between some sections or if you're transitioning to another location in between, if you are doing like breweries, you can have music up full to bring us to the next brewery for a second where you show a shot of the exterior, kind of like a little breather because you don't need to just have the interview bites after interview bite. Use transition sparingly, meaning it's 2020. We don't need, you know, 1980s peels or wipes. You, I really, it's nicer and cleaner and more modern just to use simple cuts between things. Even dissolves are, I would use them really sparingly unless it's a sad story. In television, we only used to dissolve if it was like an obituary story. Usually you just wanna use cuts, they're unnoticeable. A dissolve is noticeable and it drags things down and not, not um, let alone a, a wipe or some kind of effect like that. You wanna keep your B-roll shots fairly short, keep it moving. Um, and then the whole piece also, you don't wanna go too long. You wanna, even though you're tied to it, you wanna be able to um, they call it kill your darlings when you're editing, just like, or get a second opinion, someone that's not tied to it, that hasn't been a part of the project the whole time to chop off the fat. You don't, you know, there's a lot of stuff sometimes you just don't need. And you realize that the viewer has not seen any of it. What won't they miss? What is not essential to this piece? And of course, um, almost lastly is sharing. You want to, you have this video you made, whether it's just you talking or you need to get it out there. So you need to market it, um, share it on all your social channels, cross promote, um, you know, and share it. Of course, you're gonna upload it to YouTube probably, but you're also gonna upload it directly to Facebook instead of linking to YouTube on Facebook. Facebook likes their own native video. You might know that already. So they give more um, preference to their, if you've uploaded there in their feed rather than just linked to a YouTube video. So you're gonna have it in both places. 
Um, same thing with Instagram and Twitter. Um, and you're always including a branding, you know, your brand and a call to action. What do you want the person to do after they watch their video? Um, which is part of that video strategy I talked about in, in the beginning, you know, what's the goal of your videos and maybe you're always having the same call to action. Maybe not. Maybe you wanted to get them to sign up for your newsletter. Maybe, you know, depends on you. You wanted to build up a certain channel, build up your YouTube, build up Instagram. So you can use the video to ask, you know, for that at the end of it. When uploading to YouTube, um, I won't go over all of this, but just keep in mind all of the SEO. Uh, you know, YouTube is a search engine in and of itself, um, owned by Google. So you want to make sure you're optimizing your videos on there. You want to put the title, you want in the summary or description section, you want to put keywords and a summary of, of you know, what it is or or a transcript of the whole thing and also here don't forget more marketing cross promotion put links to your facebook and your website and all your other channels in that summary each time that summary you can have a copy and paste so copy the generic part of it that's going to go on every video which is like follow us here follow us there where you just changing maybe the first part of it which is the specific summary to this specific video you can customize your thumbnail, um, which is nice. So you keep all your thumbnails consistent. So when someone goes to your YouTube page, they all look the same. They have the same. I use canva.com to make graphics for pin, Pinterest and YouTube. And so they all have the same text and the same look. That's really nice, I think. Um, you know, you can use your brand colors. And yeah, that's uh, that's how we do it. So. Um, Obviously, you know, I do this for a living and I offer pr producing uh, production, video production, if anyone actually wants to not do it themselves. I also offer coaching and consulting for people. Basically, kind of, you know, this was sort of a quick overview of what I do, helping people though, one on one with their video strategy or specific video problems, whether it's one call or I'm, you know, monthly. Uh, I have different clients, different clients in travel. Um, I also do speaking where I come and I've spoken at, um, with Visit Buffalo and I spoke with Visit Illinois um, about video and of course about some other things like travel blogging um, and getting media coverage because I also am a travel writer. So, and I have a, a video ebook also that you can get through my website and on Amazon and I've launched a course um, last year um, and also this um, presentation is going to be up on my website, should be hopefully by the end of the day, I will have a PDF um, that you can download. And um, if you have any problems, my email is lisa at llmedia.co. Thank you so much. And I will uh, send it back to Susan. Great, Lisa. Wonderful webinar. Lots of great content in there for our, for our attendees. So really appreciate it. Thank you. Mm. Um, Thank you. For anybody that joined us late, we do our questions one of two ways. You can type your question in the question area, and I will read those out to Lisa. Alternatively, if you'd like to speak directly to Lisa to get your question answered, just go into the control panel, uh, click on that little hand symbol that lights up on my screen and lets me know you want me to unmute you. So I'll give you a, a heads up. I'll call you by your first name, let you know that I'm going to unmute you. And once I unmute you, you can uh, talk away to Lisa, get your question answered. Everybody will be able to hear the question and everybody will be able to hear the answer. Once your question has been answered to your satisfaction, I will then mute you again. We'll go on to the next question. And uh, hopefully you'll join us the next week. We've got how to be helpful in the new need state of your community. And the week following, we've got how tourism brands can use digital marketing to recover after a crisis with Connor Galway. Uh, that's going to be an amazing program. Um, and uh, I've had a few questions from people. Yes, you can go in to, uh, you get, you all get your promotion pieces from your partners, whether it's, uh, you know, Kansas or Thompson, Okanagan or uh, Central Pennsylvania, wherever you are, you get your promotion piece from your own uh, state tourism department or your DMO. Once you've got your coupon code, you can go in to elearningu.com and look at the upcoming courses and you can register for any of the courses that you want using your coupon code there. 
So that's just an easy way to take a look at everything we've got lined up till October and then uh, register for as many of those as you're interested in. Um, so now we'll get into our questions. Uh, first question. Um, first question is, do you have a tip for when I have to read something but want to look into the camera? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, there are some prompter apps. I don't have its personal experience with them, but there are different things. So there's some prompter apps, so it can be right on your phone, or you can put your phone right under the camera lens. One tip I would have is if you, if it's right under or near the camera lens, I mean, it has to be as close to the lens as possible, but the tip is don't stand close, stand as far as you can, because if you think about the math, if you're really close, we'll see your eyeballs, you know, you'll, we'll see that you're looking off, but if you're farther away, your eyes don't have to move as much to look right down below to read. So we, it's not as noticeable. There are, um, there are ways where there, let me think, there's prompt, you know, actually, then there's actual prompters where it, literally the camera lens is, there's like, a, it uses a mirror and you are looking into the lens because the, the words are like reflected through a mirror. So there are ways to do that with like an eye, pad or a, a tablet where it's used and then there's a mirror so then you are actually looking into the lens and reading at the same time but if that's not feasible you can try to use one of those apps and just put it right under the lens and then don't be standing too close to it okay uh, next what is a dslr oh i'm sorry um so it's <laughs> a good question uh I'm sorry a dslr is a uh it's a digital camera. So a digital single lens reflex camera, like a Canon uh, EOS, uh, you know, 5D or any of those big format cameras that have interchangeable lenses. Um, in the old days, uh, they used to just be called SLRs, single lens reflex. Um, and now everything's digital. So it's just a DSLR. It's just the larger cameras with those big lenses that you change. Um, so then you're able to get different focal lengths and, and, and those are like the best quality cameras for the most part, consumer level. Okay, great. Uh, next one is actually a question for me. Uh, I arrived late, is there a video of this program? Uh, yes, there's a video of all of our programs. Um, and if you receive your promotion piece from any of your DMOs, state tourism departments, et cetera, uh, in that promotion piece, you will see how to sign up, uh, get your own user ID and password so that you can log in at eLearningU. Uh, once you've got your own user ID and password, you can log in and see uh, the video that we're doing this week will generally be up within the next two to three days. Um, but we have over 350 hours of recorded program in there. So um, just take a look at the promotion piece, a little bit more detail, and they will provide a link where you sign up to get your own user ID and password. And then you just log into eLearningU anytime you want, 24-7, 365. And with your member ID and, uh, and uh, password, you can watch any of our 350 hours of video anytime you want. Uh, next question is, is a shotgun microphone the same as a boom microphone? Um, no, not exactly. So um, you can get a little shotgun mic for your phone or your DSLR or, or any camera you're using. So, and it attaches to the camera itself. And it's called a shotgun because the type of microphone it is, is directional. So it's supposed to pick up mostly what's right in front of it as opposed to on the side of it. A boom is like the, is, um, I don't, a boom is actually the pole, like a boom mic is when you're holding a big boom stick with a mic at the end <clears throat> over your head or, you know, so you have an audio person that would be holding a boom mic. So it's literally hanging right above <clears throat> the person's head just out of frame. That's a that's what's you know referred to as a boom mic. In in these cases, a shotgun is the one that you can attach to your phone, like um, Rode R O D E. Mm, sorry, hold on. <laughs> I talk so little here in uh, 
in my uh, quarantine state. <laughs> my voice is getting scratchy. Um, uh, the Shotgun Road is a company that makes some um, shotgun mics for your camera or your phone. And again, I have those on my website um, under my recommended gear page. Great. Uh, the next one is, can you tell us a little bit about your video production course? Oh, sure. Um, so last year I created a course, um, so it could be a self-paced, it's, um, it's a five-day video boot camp um, for people to, so it's, this is sort of a very quick overview of it. So I go over everything in detail and there's homework and there's a private Facebook group, but it, you can do it, you can do it in less than five days, but I, I, it has five sections um, from shooting to editing to strategy to marketing and just really kind of hold your hand a little bit more than I can do in, you know, 50 minutes. Um, yeah, and it's, it's uh, you can get that on also on my web, my website um, and you can, you know, start it and end it whenever you want. It's not like a certain window opens or anything like that. I just keep it going and um, yeah. Okay, the next is, can we have a copy of these slides? Yes, um, I mentioned, so I am going to, what you'll do is you'll go to my website and I will have the PDF there for you at the link should still be on your screen, llmedia.co slash elearningu. And I will have you, you'll sign up there and you will be able to get a download of the, the PDF. If for any reason there's any problem with that, um, a technical problem or anything, then just please email me, lisa at llmedia.co, and I will send it to you. Um, and also, I'd love to hear from anyone. Any feedback on this, please email me. I, you know, it's tough when you're, it's a one-way street here, so I'd love to hear what you thought or any suggestions or a question, any other questions you have, please feel free to email me. Okay, great. Uh, I'm down to the last two questions, so if anybody has anything that they'd like to have covered during the program, please get it in now. Uh, the next one, is there an easy way to share video to all my channels rather than one site at a time? Hmm, that's a good one. Uh, not that I know of, especially if you're, you know, definitely not, you're uploading it separately to Facebook and then you're uploading it to YouTube. Then you have those links you can share elsewhere. Like the, once you have your YouTube link, you can just copy and paste and you're sharing that elsewhere, but they're all different. You know, uh, Facebook is a different company, so you can't do it all at once necessarily, but you can just sort of paste the link. But you, you really don't want to because you want to, you might have a different intro depending on that each platform is a little different. Um, so yeah, nothing that's like instantaneously on all of them. Okay, uh, the next one is, I have a camera capable of shooting 4K HDR, but have had issues with computer capabilities to edit and render the video, i.e. slow loading, crashing, etc. Is it best to shoot at a lower resolution like 1080p? Any recommendations? Yeah, uh, it definitely is easier on systems. Uh, you know, some of that depends on your memory, your RAM, all of that stuff and i'm not an expert and on a, a, you know what I, I would need to know more details also about the capacity you have and but yes 4k is is wonderful video it's 4000 you know where 1080p is 1080 lines basically if you don't if, you, if you're shooting sports or like wildlife safari 4k is beautiful but you don't always need it um in many instances, when I've been shooting something for someone, I have chosen to shoot just 1080p for that reason. I know I can edit fast and it won't have hangups. Um, if you really want to keep it in 4K, then you probably have to upgrade whatever system you're using or get more memory or that kind of thing. Okay, and we've had another question added. Uh, which editing software do you use? I missed what you said. Oh, sure. I use, um, for the most part, Final Cut Pro, which is Apple's Apple's main system. There's kind of either, a lot of people either use Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. 
Some people use Avid. I used to use Avid when I worked in television. Um, that's still a little bit more professional. Um, and then I had also mentioned that you can also do really simple, quick videos online. There's all these websites now that offer editing capability online. Um, and I have also a blog post dedicated, it's, it's my latest blog post dedicated to these, these online. But if you're really kind of customizing, then you'd want to do it, you know, have uh, editing software yourself. And I use Final Cut Pro. I've used that for years, so I've just stuck with it. Excellent. Well, that brings us to the end of our questions, the end of our program. Lisa, thanks ever so much. Fabulous webinar. Really appreciate your, uh, you being here and providing all this great information to our attendees. Thank you. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. And make sure you check out Lisa's new video production course. Make sure before we sign off, you write down that PDF, where to get the PDF, llmedia.co slash elearningu. And uh, certainly make sure you have Lisa's email address, lisa at llmedia.co, uh, for any questions or anything else that you might need. Uh, I'm getting lots of accolades in here. Uh, Lisa, thank you. It was great. Thank you. <laughs> so that's great. Great. And hopefully. <laughs> We'll see everybody next week, how to be helpful in the new need state of your community. And the following week, how tourism brands can use digital marketing to recover after a crisis with Connor Galway. And just keep in mind, you can always go into eLearningU. Once you've got your coupon code, go into eLearningU and you can register for any of the upcoming courses in the upcoming courses area. Uh, also in the... Um, in the, if you want to watch any of the 350 plus recorded courses that we've got, just get your own user ID and password. Go to the promotion piece that you get from your DMO, your state tourism department, et cetera, and uh, sign up, get your own user ID and password, access any of the 350 hours of recorded course. If you're with the DMO or a state that's not getting these videos, not providing them out to your industry, uh, send me an email and let me know that uh, you'd like me to contact them to uh, see if they can provide it to your whole tourism industry. And uh, this last week, we, uh, we have our new website up. Uh, so I'd love to have some feedback. Susan at elearningu.com. Uh, let us know what you think of the new website and you'll be receiving uh, newly branded promotion pieces this week. So love to have any feedback on our new uh, on our new branding. So thanks again ever so much, Lisa. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, everybody, for attending, and we'll see you next week. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.